You are listening to TF Talk News, part of the TF Talk network of podcasts and live streams, where we give you the most relevant current stories in your fandom and more, all within 30 quick minutes or less. I'm your host, Mr. Starscream, and I'll be your guide to everything worth talking about that transformed since last episode. It's your old buddy, Starscream. I am the new leader of the Decepticons. Discover more of our great shows at tftalk.net and follow us on social media channels at TFYLP. Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. This is TF Talk News for the week starting April 19th, 2020. This is Mr. Starscream, and here's a rundown of all the pertinent goings-ons that have happened in your fandom this week. We're going to start, like we always do, with the reveal spiel and following up off of last week's blue balled coverage of MPM 10 Starscream, we now have had a full week to soak up his Bayverse glory. As promised by Hasbro Asia, MPM 10 Starscream was shown off in a rather uncharacteristically impressive media blitz, including toy renders, prototype photographs, and an incredible stop motion animated video that I'm almost certain was created by animation artist Counter656 on YouTube. Hasbro has been employing this creator to make a bunch of these high quality stop motion videos to promote some high end figures like Atmos LeBronvoy and the previous masterpiece movie toys. Give him a subscribe on YouTube if you can. Now on to His Highness, I find it interesting that MPM-10, being Baver Starscream, incidentally correlates to the main Masterpiece line, whereas Convoy was MP-01 and MP-10. What strange bedfellows Transformers sometimes have. If you recall, the movie Masterpiece series started 10 years ago in Japan as Takara Tomy's preferred method of releasing the remarkable leader class Hunt for the Decepticon Starscream toy. 10 years later, MPM-10 looks to be a significantly more screen-accurate depiction of Megatron's lecherous second-in-command. The toy's proportions are closer to what we saw on the screen, and although it sports the Movie 1 deco, It also includes his buzzsaw hand accessory seen in Revenge of the Fallen. Also included is a Battle Blade missile attachment and an arm-mounted Gatling gun, which I guess is as close as we'll probably be getting to a Null Ray. All of these items can attach to his F-22 Raptor alt mode, but the most jaw-dropping inclusion is probably his rear-mounted thrusters in robot mode. These were featured prominently during his attack on the Air Force in the first film, and have only been available through various third-party add-ons previously. Now let's talk about those individually articulated fingers. They appear to each have an individual hinge to maximize that creepiness vibe. There seems to be an extreme amount of posability by the inclusion of a variety of joints never before seen on a movie Starscream figure. This toy is releasing in America on September 1st and is exclusive to Target stores. Holy crap! The first ever masterpiece release at Target. Their price on this figure is $149.99, which also seems like a great deal, at least to me. Trying to order this online is likely to be a total bloodbath, but if you're already getting nervous, you can find some pre-orders at a significantly higher price out there in Transformer land, so you just have to pick your poison. It's also a rational assumption that there will be a Takara Tomy Japan-only release of this figure in a Japan-exclusive package, but don't expect the figure to be any different. Just know that if Target is not a place you like to deal with, there will be alternatives. All hail Starscream. I can't hear you. All hail Starscream. One more time. All hail Starscream. Some fans were a little let down by this reveal because they were expecting a visit from the good doctor. But have no fear, Starscream haters. There may be a glimmer of hope in your future. Just today, leaks of an altogether separate movie masterpiece release was found on UK distributor Abgee's website. I think that's how you say it. Who knows? I'm not from there. 
simply titled Transformers TF Movie Masterpiece 2 and listed for a wholesale price of £119.99, at least I, again, think that's what you say. Many are jumping to conclusions that this is the long-awaited movie masterpiece Ratchet figure that will complete the original cast of Autobots from the first film. So is it Ratchet? Mr. Starscream would never subjugate himself to the assumptions of mere mortals. So for now, we shall see, Galvatron. We shall see. So, Generation Selects, the line that keeps on giving. It's finally been confirmed via Entertainment Earth Order screenshots that Deluxe Earthrise Grease Pit, Exhaust, and Hubcap are in our future this fall. There may be more beyond this, but my faucet never drips. I'm going to go out on the strongest limb of the concrete tree and predict that Exhaust is simply a Diaclone Marlboro Wheeljack Redeco of Earthrise Wheeljack, a la MP23, and Grease Pit will be a heavy remold of Earthrise Modulator Ironworks. He may even be a completely new tool, so don't quote me on that just yet. What is of extreme interest is Ol' Hubcap, which one might expect to be a yellow redeco of Earthrise Klimf Jumper. But what if? What if this is the precursor to our curiously missing other yellow minibot that we haven't seen in the mainline for a few years? Prime told me there'd be days like this. Curious indeed. Grease Pit and Exhaust are expected to arrive in August, with Hubcap trailing behind in September of 2020. San Diego Comic-Con was finally confirmed to be canceled this week. And although this is a real bummer to the pop culture and collector community, it led me to wonder what will become of all the limited edition exclusive product planned to be sold at this event. Lead times on products for most companies is well over six months. So in order to have the figures on hand for sale at SDCC, most stuff is already off the production line. We don't know exactly what Hasbro, or any of the companies for that matter, were going to sell at the con, but we know they are going to have to get creative with how they bring these items to market now. Luckily for us, Hasbro Pulse seems like the obvious choice for release of any Transformers exclusives, and with their experience live streaming the Toy Fair panel this year, perhaps we can still expect some sort of web-facing SDCC panel-like equivalent for news regarding your favorite brands. I mean, they gotta do something. What do you think was going to be the Transformers brand SDCC reveal? Send in your ideas and I'll read them on the air next episode. You can reach me at tftalknews at tftalk.net. I know I've got my ideas, but I really want to know what you're thinking. I'll keep third-party news Super brief, there's photos of the next piece of Devil Savior's combiner, which is DS-03 Compressor, that is a third-party take on Overload, a piece of their ROTF Devastator combiner. This has a much more humanoid approach to the never-seen-on-screen character, and the vehicle mode looks very realistic. But I'll just say I'm glad I don't have a mighty need to grab this hunk of plastic, but maybe I'm just trying to be a troublemaker. And now, let's talk about what's on the shelf. Or actually, let's not. It's dawned on me that in the current climate, promoting toy sightings in stores like Target, Walmart, Best Buy, etc. is not only irresponsible, it's downright dangerous. No new toy sighting is worth putting yourself or others in danger to get it first. There are literally hundreds of options to pre-order or purchase brand new product online where it can safely be delivered to your home right now. There are reasons that certain states are closing non-essential sections of stores like the technology aisles and toy aisles. This show will not be reporting on in-store sightings until the world feels a bit more normal again. And I implore you, if you must go to the store and you do happen to stray by the toy aisle by accident, and you find something tasty there, enjoy it. But you don't need to post it online to entice anyone else to rush out to find it as well. Please think of people other than yourselves. And on that lovely note, 
I think it's time to end the show for today. Next week is our 10th show, Oh My God. I had hoped that TF Talk Weekly would get to episode 10, but I just couldn't keep up. I'll do my best to make next week a little special, but don't hold my faceplate to this melting pool just yet. Be sure to tune in for an all-new episode of TFYLP Monday night at 8.30 Central. Till next time! The TF Talk Network exists due to the efforts of an enthusiastic collection of Transformers fans across North America and beyond. Check out our variety of shows like Microcasters, Ouch My Wallet, Cut the Tape, and our flagship show featuring a rotating all-star cast, TFYLP, which has been running for over 10 years. The cast at the TF Talk Network is always growing, so if you have a desire to participate, reach out to us via any of our social platforms at TFYLP. The TF Talk cast is on Discord. You can join us for free by typing bit.ly slash TF Talk Discord in the browser of your choice. Intro and outro score provided by Surrender. You can find Surrender at surrender-official.bandcamp.com. Directly support our shows and keep us on the air by becoming a monetary supporter of TFYLP on Patreon. Donations through Patreon are used to cover production and server expenses that keep our shows running and are not distributed to individual staff members. If you have any comments or feedback, you can directly email the show at tftalknews at tftalk.net, and we'd love to read some of your comments on the air. And if you've got a hot news tip, send it my way. I'm going to improv a little song here for my new best buddy, Slitherfang. Slitherfang, he's part of the gang. Everybody get him, Slitherfang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs>